Hello, and welcome to the Writing Guys podcast, where we help writers get inside a guy's head by answering questions on how men think. I'm Lancy McCall, today's moderator, and our hosts are Michael Aspen and C.T. Andrews. Hello. Hi, everybody. All right. So today's listener question is, can men only do one thing at a time? I'm sorry. Uh, you're going to have to repeat that. I was scratching my nose and couldn't listen at the same time. <laughs> uh, yeah. What'd you say? I'm sorry. I was, uh, I was adjusting. <laughs> Uh, I have, I have strong opinions on this particular question because I have heard this, uh, for a long period of my life and it irks me to no end because I am perfectly capable of doing more than one thing at one time. Um, I, it just depends on the thing, right? There are certain things that will draw my focus and I will not be able to to focus on anything else, but there are plenty of times where I can do multiple things at the same time. I have successfully watched a movie and surfed my phone and carried on a text message at the same time, right? That is, that is, that is multitasking right there because they're both, they're all three low capacity items, right? But if I'm yeah. working on a problem at work and it's tricky to figure out, I will, all my focus will zero in on that. And then, yeah, no, yeah, I can't do more than just that because I'm trying to dedicate everything in my life to that. So I guess, I guess it's just, and this is going to come across as misogynist, but it irks me so much. I don't care. Maybe it's just that men can focus. I mean, it's just a thought. <laughs> yeah. How about that? You know, I, I, my answer is pretty much the same. Um, I, I've never I've never been irked by the notion that we can't do more things at once because I've always kind of used that as my uh, scapegoat. You know, yeah. uh, I, I like it when they well, you can't do two things at once. OK, yeah, cool. You're cool. right. One thing at a time, you know, and there there goes my responsibility of having to do two things at one time. However, yeah, I mean, who, come on. What are we talking about when they say can't do more than two things at one time? Can I, can I, you know, uh, uh, drive my car and, and if the phone rings, talk on the phone at the same time? Yeah, I can yeah. do that. You know, things of that nature, right? So whenever, whenever people say men can't do two things at the same time as a popularism, Let's define what they mean just a little yeah. bit. You no, know, let's define that because like Michael said, if I'm busy with something at work or if I'm, uh, you, you know, doing something, a, a project, even a personal project that's time sensitive, maybe then, yeah, I don't like to be interrupted from that. I don't like, I like to put my focus on it and my, my bearings down and be able to work on that. Like as a writer, Oh, you broke up. I think we're all right. If you I'm in the up, zone, you repeat yourself. What's that? You broke up a little bit. Okay. Repeat what you were saying. Uh, yeah, we're all writers, right? So let's as a writer, if I'm in the zone, I'm doing one thing. I'm doing one thing, and that's writing. You know, if you pull me out of that because some exterior situation happens, then I'm gonna have a hard time getting back into that. But mm -hmm. if that's me, if that's because I'm a man then I'd like to know what women's secret is, you know, because I don't think it's any different for women either, you know? Um, so to me, this, to me, this is the same classification of statement as women can't drive. I have ample evidence in my life that women are perfectly capable and in many cases better at driving than men. And yet this, this persists in our culture that women can't drive. Right. And that's, utter bullshit it's uh, i get i'm so angry about this damn question i tell you you guys got to talk me down i'm so i have a, well i have a question um because i didn't really i didn't know this was a thing I oh mean, yeah so where does this come from i mean i've heard the generalization that women are are better multitaskers i've heard that but i didn't honestly i just didn't give too much thought about it where does this come from uh, I think I think this comes from the idea that po it, 
popularly speaking, women are interested in people, men are interested in things. And if you're interested in people, then your attention has the capacity to be pulled in multiple directions. Whereas if you're interested in things, you tend to focus on, on one certain area or aspect. Um, I don't know if that's even accurate, to be honest with you. Um, but even if it was accurate, I don't think it's, I don't think it's as true as people want it to be. It was, I think, I've got a different origin, but a similar outcome to that, which is the the old adage that women are a plate of spaghetti and men are waffles. The women, the 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 theory there is that women's minds have all of the strands of thought all intertwined all the time. So when you think about one thing, it's touching on 20 different things simultaneously. Whereas a guy, when he's thinking about one thing, he's in one little square of the waffle. And that's the one thing he's thinking about. And then if he thinks about something else, he moves to another square. And I would say in general, my experience with my wife is that oftentimes when one thought occurs to her, it will spur a bunch of other thoughts that she thinks she needs to potentially take action on simultaneously. So like if we're trying to get out the door, she'll also be like, oh, and I'm going to start the laundry and I need to start the dishes. And I'm like, no, 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 we need to get out the door. Right. But for her, it's, this is a list of stuff that needed to get done. And we're trying, and one of them is get out the door. So all these other things also kind of have a sense of urgency to them, to her now, and she wants to get them done. But, but to say that she's multitasking better than me, because she's getting distracted by those items at that moment is not, yeah, not true. Right. But, and that, but then to say, you know, that my ability to focus on the one thing that needs to happen at that moment isn't necessarily good either, right? I mean, there are times when I'm so focused on that, I'm not taking something else into consideration. But the idea that that translates to you can only think of one thing at a time because you're a guy, whereas a woman can think about multiple things simultaneously because she's a woman, that's not true. I can take a lot of different things into consideration. So yeah, anyway, go ahead. So I'm just going to just bust the myth right there because I am a woman and I cannot multitask. I cannot. Yeah, really? I can only do one thing at a time. And if something interrupts me, I lose the plot on everything. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. So, I would like to, I would like I'm, to champion Lancey as our spokesperson on this topic because yeah. that makes me well, feel so good. Yeah. yeah. See, I've talked about it before. I'm not the typical yeah, well, right. Well, see, here's here's the thing. I'm so glad to hear you say that, Lancey, because this is what I've always said. There's no such thing as multitasking. There's That's only prioritization. It's that like is absolutely true. That's absolutely true, CT. And there are scientific studies to back that up. I don't want to just say that's an opinion we have. There's proof that that's all BS. That multitasking doesn't actually work. Yeah, okay, some, go ahead, go ahead. some high level marketer came up with a new term back in the 80s and popped it out in some you know, catalog and boom, it took off. We all have to multitask now. There's no such thing. Even even what you were saying, Michael, about your wife, about how she has to run the dishwasher and start the clothes before she leaves the house. Why can't she do it all at once? Yeah. <laughs> She's still doing it one thing, one thing at, at a time. At a time. Yeah. I'm, I'm over here. And there, but you know, so so yeah, I, I've never bought into the idea of multitasking. It doesn't do me any good. To share this opinion in a job interview, I know this for a fact because <laughs> for months. But it just it drives me insane how much stock we put in the ability to multitask. I think what I mean, CT is absolutely... I think what CT has learned is that the accuracy of data has no place in a job interview, none whatsoever. <laughs> no, but you're absolutely right when you make that statement because um, you know, outside of writing, I'm a project manager. And we are always, we talk about how we're always juggling balls in the air and you are, you've got a lot of things going, but it's more like um, you set that ball to rolling. And then once that started, you set that ball to rolling. And then once that started, you set that ball to rolling and then you come back around and do whatever you need to do next over here, but you're still only doing one thing at a time. Yep. Yeah. You're just prioritizing them, right? You're doing the most important thing or the most beneficial thing first. Yeah. And then moving on to the next, right? That's now so yeah, and I, if you're lucky, whatever you're the things you're trying to do, some of them can run on their own while you're doing the other thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I do wonder. So I have felt occasionally overwhelmed when I have more than one thing demanding my attention at my time, but it's usually not just like two. It's whenever there's like 
20 things all want an answer immediately. I can feel overwhelmed and get frustrated by that. And it is hard for me because for me, I'm trying to prioritize which one needs the answer first to get them moving. So it's not just answering first come first serve for me. It's also, okay, which one's most important to get done now? It may not be the first one that came to me. So with me trying to prioritize that, that adds extra burden to my brain trying to figure that out. But that's not necessarily meaning I can't handle all those things at one time. Right. It's yeah, just, well, it's just feels overwhelming. So. Yeah. If, if multitasking was an actual option you had, you'd never get overwhelmed. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You just put your eight arms out or your 12 arms out. Just do them all at once. Get them all done. No problem. But you can't do that. That's why, you know, it reminds me of, of I've, been, I've been in a lot of uh, community theater plays as an actor because I'm acting with acting in me goes all the way back to high school. And the most frightened and scared and nervous you are is standing backstage right before opening night when you hear all of the audience coming in and they're piling in and there's a bunch of murmur and hum uh hubbubbing out in the out in the uh auditorium and the curtains are drawn and you know you've got five minutes to curtain this is when a, an actor or me anyway or i am most scared have most stage fright because all the lines that I am about to go out and perform over the next two hours are running through my head. Like, like at the same time, all the moments that I have and all the stuff that I have to remember. And am I going to be able to hit this cue on time? Is that prop going to be planted correctly? And all blah, 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 all this stuff. And I, I realized once a long, long time ago, in order to defeat that, all I had to do was think about my very first line. None of the rest. If I've rehearsed correctly, if I've practiced correctly, if I if I know my role, then I got nothing to worry about. Just think about delivering my first line. <laughs> See? And so that's what happens when we try to multitask. Our brains explode. I tell you the, the most interesting um, um, example of this that I've had lately. It's right now while we're filming this, it's summer. And during summer, kids are out of school. And so I've had my three grandchildren at various points during the summer staying with me. And when you have more than one of them, they all want to talk at the same time. Yeah. And and the volume level rises because they're trying to talk over each other. And we have these moments where, where I just like, nope, we're not talking. Everybody be quiet. I will point to you when it's time for you to go. We're going to take it one at a time because that's all I can handle. <laughs> yeah. 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 If the question of the day had any prudence whatsoever, which I don't think it does, that what you just described was the mind of a man. Now, is that the mind of a man? Because you're a grandmama, you know, you're not a man. And yet you still, you still have these solutions for these same issues. You know what I mean? So, yeah. You know, so, um, I, I remember in high school, this was something that was fairly common. I remember girls telling me that, oh, you're a man, you can only do one thing at a time. I remember one of my first jobs, um, that was a common refrain from like female managers would say stuff like that. Oh, well, you're a guy, you can't do more than one thing at a time. And I, I was, I, a lot of times this was said by people that either A, I worked for them, so I couldn't really say anything, or B, I was in a social situation where if I try to refute it i sound like a whiny little bitch I'm like well that's not really true you know well actually that's not true and then you know oh go yeah. away poindexter nobody gives a fuck what you think kind of thinking and and so it you know it, it most of the responses i saw from other guys were more like what ct does that oh shucks i guess you're right ha 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 you know meanwhile you're just sitting there seething at it and i've been seething for a long time it really irks me because I, I have, I, I remember, so I used to work uh, a number of places and I was shocked at how much more efficient I could be at doing my job than other people. This is not always the case. There are places where I wasn't very efficient. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that every job I went into, I was some sort of God and could just get everything done quickly. But there were places where I fell into my skill set and my skill set, I could, I could get stuff done fast because I was able to prioritize my tasks. I was able to understand which tasks required, like you were talking about, Lancey, other people to get back to me. So if, if I needed something to get 
out to get to somebody else and get back to me, that would be the first thing I would work on. Not because it was the highest priority, but because I knew that could be working while I was doing something else, right? And then I, at the end of my day, I would be done with everything I needed to do. And I'd be, I would have only worked like four or six hours. And I'm like, fuck, now I got to wait until I can leave, right? I'm ready to go home and there's no more I can do. And other people that I worked with would still be plugging away and like, oh, I still got to get this email out to Michelle, or I got to get this email out to John. And I'm like, why didn't you do that at eight o'clock this morning? So they could get you an answer by now, because you're now not going to get your answer until tonight or tomorrow. Right. And, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, could somebody who can only do one thing at a time and, and is treated like they're kind of dumb for it, be able to do that? You know, no, it just, it just, oh, it just irks me so much. It just, yeah. Actually, oh, you actually brought up an important thought in my head. Well, a thought and the concept okay. is important. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. But, you know, I think CT said it earlier about, uh, and he was commenting on something you'd said about when you try to multitask and how you get aggravated and frustrated. And it's made me think about, you know, with the advent of this word multitasking, at the same time, We've seen, you know, everybody's acknowledging in the last few years, a rise in mental health issues. And, and also in today's society, people are almost forced to have to multitask because think about on your computer, you're working or you're surfing the net or whatever. And all of a sudden you got all these ads popping up and you got these interruptions or even on TV, how they throw everything at you. And this is the world that the younger people are raised in and living with. And is there a correlation between the rise and the mental health issues that we're seeing? I I would say there's a lot of factors, but that is definitely one, right? Initially, I don't know if multitasking itself has anything to do with the rise in mental issues that we're having, because honestly, no one really knows what multitasking is. Um, yeah. It's doing multiple tasks at the same time, but it's fast switching. You're, doing you're, just, time, you know? yeah, you're just jumping your brain from one thing to another really, really fast. That's all you're doing. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I will say that the amount of input that we have today from a mental perspective versus yesterday being 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 25 years ago is yeah. so much higher now and the messages are so much more diversified i guess if you want to call it that um <laughs> i'm sure that has something to do with the, the stress level that people are under and the the distraction that they have which all may apply towards mental issues and mental illness sure um but i think uh, i don't yeah, know if just... multitasking itself but for whatever it is, has anything to do with it. I think where I think where it where it boils down to is there's so many things that want your attention, but every human only has so much attention to give. There can be this that that fear of missing out, that fear of of or just the whole I you know I want to pay attention to more than I can, right? How many times have you heard this phrase uttered by insert anybody, right? We want to raise awareness. Raise awareness means that you want your product or your service or your charity or your whatever to be the signal in the noise. There's so much noise. We are actually, this podcast, part of the noise right now. Our total subscriber count on YouTube as of today is 32 subscribers. How many users are there on YouTube? How many millions of people watch YouTube every day? We are just part of the noise. We're not you know, Mr. Beast or MKBHD or, or some of these other guys that are out there that get millions of views every day who are the signal, we're the noise. We're still part of the noise. I'd like to not be. I would like to be part of the signal. I'd love to raise the awareness of our podcast. But just think when you when you go to a streaming service, when you go to YouTube, when you look at a, um, a social media site like Reddit or Facebook, how overwhelming that can be just how many people there are how many posts they're putting out how many television shows there are how many movies there are there's so much and you can only watch you can only interact with so much right so that's where i think like that whole multitasking thing 
that's that's kind of like the the iterative thought on that process that's what i was saying it's it's like i think a part of the part of it is there's just so much that people want your attention they want to get your awareness on their thing and it's so hard to get that done because there's so much noise out there so much more noise than there used to be it's, well and it's, it's stressful it's, it's good for the creator in one sense because it lowers the bar of entry you can go create a movie and put it on youtube there's there's nothing to stop you other than just going and creating the movie hell you can shoot a movie on an iphone right you get a couple of people in a script and an iphone and a couple of microphones and you can go shoot a movie and distribute it on youtube and you might make millions right whereas it used to be to make a movie you had to buy expensive movie camera expensive camera equipment and audio equipment and all this other stuff is so much more expensive than it is today so it's lowered the bar in one sense made it easier for you to be a creator but it makes it harder to get noticed because you don't have only you know five distribution channels like you used to have yeah. um, anyway sorry go ahead Lance. <laughs> you were gonna say something and i kind of steamrolled you i apologize <laughs> no i was just i was just thinking about the stress of it right yeah the stress of having to look here look there all the things coming at you and just you know mental yeah like, are you familiar with the light phone and how popular this has gotten with a lot of people lately are you familiar with this device the what uh, the light phone no so um because because smartphones have become ubiquitous everybody has one um and a lot of people feel overwhelmed by all of this coming at them in their pocket all the time they uh there's a company that decided to create a phone called the light phone it's actually on version two now that uses a little e-ink display it's only like a two inch e-ink display and it can only like send and receive text messages email and phone calls and like, that's it. There's no apps. I think it has directions on there and like a couple other really small little tools, but you can't get a social media app on there. You can't go surf the web on there. It's, it's very restrictive. And a lot of people have really jumped on this because they say, and, and the dumb phone revolution is another one where people talk about this. They've jumped on it because they're like, our lives are so entwined with this stupid phone. I want to not be distracted by it all the time and experience life. And I don't have the ability to limit myself. So I'm going to let the device limit it for me. And they've really gotten some traction, right? They, it's you, The light phone is usually sold out and you've got to go on a waiting list and they'll on their next production run, you'll maybe get one. Yeah, so, I was, I'd yeah. never heard of the light phone, but yeah. uh, that's kind of what I always wished my smartphone was. Just a text device that yeah. received and sent phone calls and gave me directions and that's really yeah, all yeah. i wanted to do but you know it does I'll make you, i'll send you a link off air to the light phone okay. too and you can you can buy one all right cool <laughs> yeah I'll check it out uh but it does make me wonder with all of this distraction and input and yada 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 and this overwhelming uh misnomer to that we have to uh multitask and whatever else Whose brains handle it better, men or women's? I mean, who who does who deals with stress better? If women really are like spaghetti, and men really are like waffles, then who actually deals with it better? Because I don't think either sex has any greater capacity for multitasking than the other. Uh, so, so what's left in the wake of all of this is stress and, and disorder and you know, craziness. And it just makes me wonder which, which, which natural pattern of thought handles the stress better. Would it be women or would it be men? I don't know. I have no idea, but I do think there's a little bit of truth to that analogy. I do think women tend to go on tangents uh, in their thought processing a little, a little more than men do. Whereas men stay a little more caged inside their little box uh, than more so than women. And I, I think that's just a, a, a natural, you know, difference between the two sexes. And, you know, makes and, me wonder. Who I, deals mean, I, with think, I, I think though, where I, where I land on it, and I wish, I wish this message, if we do get to be some of the noise, or I'm sorry, if we do get to be some of the signal, I wish that people would look at the differences in the way men and women think as values, valuable, not disparaging right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I don't always uh, appreciate 
my wife wanting to do a bunch of other things when we're trying to get out the door. That can be annoying. But whenever I mention something to her and she brings up aspects that I may not have considered that I need to, that is incredibly valuable. And whenever it's, it's fallen on me, whenever it is time that we have to meet a timeline, we have to go to a party or we got to go visit friends or we need to be at a show at a specific time or a movie or whatever. And I'm the one saying, okay, if our car isn't backing out the driveway at this time, we're late. Yeah, That's a valuable thing that I provide. Right. Yeah. So yeah. There, the, the thing is, is just because it's different doesn't mean it's dumb. Right. One of and that's what bugs me. That's one what, of the first... that attitude that bugs me. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> one of the first valuable lessons I learned as a project manager was that the more diverse your team, and by diversity, I mean different backgrounds, different knowledge bases, different thought processes. I'm not talking about you know, how we look or what our gender is. I'm talking about how we think and how we problem solve and things like that. Right. Uh, because all that other stuff doesn't matter. It's, you shouldn't even, it's not a consideration, but the more diverse your team is, the better end product you have because they think of things you didn't think of. This one's going to think of it from an engineering point of view. This one's going to think of it from an aesthetics point of view, you know, and you're going to tick a lot more boxes because you got people who look at it differently and think differently. So the more diverse your team is, the better product you end up with. There's a couple of really great examples in the modern world. Have you, have you heard of the Instagram experiment where they would take, they would take a photo that's really tall, like this tall, and it would have two people at either end of the photo. It would have a person at the top and a person at the bottom. And the middle would all be white space. And they would have a, a like a black person or a Mexican or somebody like that, somebody other than a Caucasian and a Caucasian. And they would they'd reverse them. Like sometimes the, the person of color would be at the bottom and the white person would be at the top or vice versa. But anyway, they would load it to Instagram and they would allow the algorithm with its facial recognition technology to determine where to center itself on that image and 99% of the time it focused on the white guy and you would only know that if you clicked on the image then it would show the whole thing right it would zoom out to show the whole thing and it was an algorithm trained on images <laughs> of white people so that's a prime example of and, and you're talking about diversity of thought i'm i'm referring back to diversity of skin color uh, an example of it was a lot of white guys that came up with an algorithm to and they used white people to to program the algorithm and and of course that's the end result that spits out and they and they well, because bias is built into those kinds of mechanism bias mechanism. is built into that mechanism right because the people who designed it designed it with a bias they didn't even realize they had i'm yeah. sorry ct i i'm sorry i got all excited i was going to throw my technical background michael has been so talkative today I, this like one in particular you. just irks me so much what are you on dude because you were <laughs> oh anyway go ahead ct sorry said Ridlin, uh, <laughs> I don't remember what I was going to say, but I'm sure I'm sure it was going to. We were uh, talking about diversity of, of. Yeah, it was going to reaffirm the the value of of that brand of diversity and how we don't put enough value on it anymore. That's the val. It's the it's diversity of thought idea. God forbid it actually comes up with different viewpoints and and you know. Di yeah disagreements from time to time and that terrible thing what is it con uh condescending speech not condescending uh de de dissension whatever uh you know speech that doesn't agree with each other conflict uh, i don't know no descending dissenting speech oh, okay. dissenting. Uh, yeah like a dissenting yeah. opinion yeah yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah yeah i mean that's but that's how that's how teams and this comes from you lancy a project manager this is how teams get through their problems or figure out their issues come to agreements and make the greatest product they can uh and make a better product so yeah yeah one of the things oh, i used to do that's it <laughs> one of the things that i actually used to do as a project manager is if we had someone in the company that was going around and like naysaying the project like every every time you turned around so-and-so was saying, this is a terrible idea. You know, this is going to blah, blah, blah. I actually would get them assigned to the project. Mm. Because, uh, well, yeah. yeah, because they were seeing something or thinking something that we hadn't thought of Yeah, because they had a negative opinion and 
And honestly, 10 times out of 10 that I did that, 100% got them on board. They got to have their say. They got to see that we were listening and they would become the biggest cheerleader for the product because they saw we were interested in correcting the problems. I think that's very smart. It goes right back to the whole Elon Musk conversation we had weeks and weeks ago when the rocket blows up and he goes, yes, it blew up because now they get to figure out what went wrong. Yeah. Right. You know, the the conversation we were having, he launches rockets into space and he'd rather them blow up than come back in one piece. Yeah. Fail faster. So you can, yeah. He had an ingenious point. He said, if, if a model that is, is we know as a test model that isn't going to be the final design doesn't blow up and it comes back and lands we have to store it somewhere i'd rather have it blow up that we can learn more from it and then i don't have to store the stupid thing i was like that's actually pretty that's pretty good thinking on that part yeah if you think about it it's better to figure out why a rocket blew up than why it didn't blow up right (laughs) yeah yeah exactly Actually, so this is totally not on our topic, but I've actually thought about putting together a presentation for people um, about how failure is your friend. Mm. No, yeah, I think it is. I mean, because I've, I don't think this way and it took me a while to figure out that I'm like rare, but so many people have a fear of failure and there's no reason to, because it helps make you better. Every yeah. time you fail, you get better. I've got so but, much experience with that. Take it from me. You're right. <laughs> I, I completely agree that you're right. And um, but I, I think the reason why it's so popular to not fail is because a lot of people only show their successes and yeah. a lot of people only value successes um, that are not you. And so you learn you learn early on that success is the only thing that's valued. And and they don't realize that the road to success is literally paved with failure, right? You you can't get there without well, it. Uh, one thing I've always said is failure is just a step in the process. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you fail and then you take the next step and then you fail and then you take the next step until eventually you've produced the best thing you could because you got rid of all the bad things. You That's guys right. realize what we've done this episode? We've omitted two words out of the English language. One was multitask and the other one is fail. There's no such <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we are changing humanity for the better. Yeah. So we totally veered off course. Um, yeah, it's okay. But I think the, the overwhelming opinion is that the idea that men or really anyone can only do one thing at a time is a fallacy. Yes. Yeah. No I, more than anybody no, else. I, yeah, I think I think anybody being able to do more than one thing at a time is a fallacy, but it's unfair that men get tagged with that, right? It is. It is. Um, but you know, you need to be tagged with at least some things, right? Because women oh, yeah. get all the bad rap on other things. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just teasing. I have a joke though. I have a joke around this. Okay. So I am so nervous. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> well, it's. I need a bad right now. It was really a visual, so I'm going to have to describe it. But this was something I saw many years ago, and I thought it was super funny. It um, it showed like women's brains and men's brains. And so the women's brains had like, it looked like a giant maze with a bunch of little blue balls running all over the place and the little spaghetti trails going everywhere. And, you know, that's the women's brain. And then you got down, it, it didn't really show anything for the men's brain. And you're, you know, like, well, what is this? It's like, oh, don't worry about that. All they have to worry about is two blue balls. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh, uh, if only that were true. Right? And now society has slipped back where it was. Thank you, Lancey. Yes. You know, I don't feel that way. But I know. Yeah. That yeah. No, I did, you know, you're right. There's humor in that, though. There's, you know, every, every joke has a kernel of truth. Just a kernel. You know. I don't know if this is enough for an entire episode, but I, so I'll mention it here. Another thing that I have felt as a target is my size. I'm a I'm a big guy. I'm I'm like a football linebacker, NFL football linebacker that just is not in very good shape, right? I'm I'm very tall. I have very wide shoulders. I you know I'm just a big stocky guy, and a lot of times a person who is big is treated like they're a monosyllabic idiot, and 
and the ability that I can say monosyllabic idiot shows that I'm not. <laughs> so, but I, there's been oftentimes where people judge me as, oh, this is a guy that is going to speak like a Cro-Magnon. And it's, I'm often fighting over that urge of people to, to put me in that box. I honestly, Michael, yeah. I honestly think that we could do a show on the things that the three of us have experienced mm. in the way we've been judged based on our appearance. Because I've talked to you guys about how I was judged when I was younger in the corporate environment. Yes. And I know CT's had that. We should actually put that on our list. Absolutely. Yeah. I would love to do that episode. That would be great. So there you go. A new episode has just spawned in front of your eyes, audience. All 32 of you have just seen magic happen. <laughs> Tell your friends. Don't forget the audio listeners. We, there's more out there. Oh, yeah, there are more there. But that's a much more, that's a much harder metric. When we go do our annual review in January, where we talk about things like that, that's one of the things I'm going to talk about is how difficult it is to measure the audio listeners on all of those channels. Um, cause there's no one single point that you can go grab that data from. You've got your distributor and it, it, but yeah. they don't necessarily refer that information back to you. So you've got, you've got plays is what I can measure. And so certain episodes get more plays than others. Yeah. Uh, uh, an episode that just released this week or no last week got quite a few. Remember the episode we did on emotional cheating versus physical cheating. Mm -hmm. That one is gotten like 18 or 20 views on YouTube, which is pretty high. Nowhere near oh. as high as the one we did where we had talking about why do men go soft during sex? That's still our all time. Number one. Right. Like, yeah, I feel like we drew in like a different audience too. I on think that. so. Yeah. Do you, right. so, do you guys have some in mind too? What did you what? say? I think I cut you off. I said, I said women have a one track mind too. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, do you guys have some final thoughts on our topic? Why do men only do one thing at a time? Nothing that hasn't already been said on my part. I mean, um, just don't interrupt me if I'm writing or if I'm working on something that I'm taking seriously or like eating a delicious breakfast burrito or something. <laughs> you know, I, I like I like doing things one at a time. But to, to say that I as a man can't do more than more things, more than one thing at a time because I'm a man is kind of ridiculous until you define what multitasking is. And then nobody can do that. So it's kind of a yeah, it's an interesting question. I'm going to take a much more serious approach to my final thought, which is um, communication can really help if you are focused and unable to pull your brain out. Um, there are times when I'm in the middle of something like sending an email or writing a chapter or something and my wife needs to get my attention and, or I'm, I'm in the middle of a conversation with somebody else and she's like tugging them and, and whatever. And I didn't hear what she said. And I, and we have permission to turn to the other one and she does it too. Um, where she's busy with something and I'll start talking to her and we'll turn to him and go, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wasn't listening. I was focused on something else. You have my attention now. What were you saying? And neither one of us takes that as a slight. We've said that to each other in public and people are like, Jesus, that was rude. And I'm like, no, you don't, you don't understand. Right. This is, this is us respecting the other person instead of, instead of fighting our natural instinct to be focused on what we were doing and and trying to pull ourselves out of that, we finish that very quickly, or we get ourselves disengaged as quickly as we can, and then turn to the other person because they are important and say, I want to hear what you said. I didn't hear it. And now I want you to repeat it. So I do hear it. Mm -hmm. And that, that when we started doing that, that was huge. Cause there was many times when we would get upset with each other. You're not even listening to me. It's like, well, you're right, but I do want to listen to you. Right. And so now I am. And, and that, uh, I, I'm just going to throw that out there because I know that that's kind of like related to what we were talking about. And it's been a really big benefit for us. Yeah. I, uh, I respect that because my husband and I are, are, do the same thing because I am the person who's, you know, can only do one thing at a time. And he knows he has to get my attention before he starts talking or I'll be like, what? I'm yeah. sorry. What? <laughs> yeah, um, <talking> to me? <laughs> something I didn't even mention that you guys will appreciate and I'm doing it here at the tail end, but my husband actually does multitask very well. Mm. It makes me a little crazy. Like you know, sometimes he sits downstairs in our living room and works and he'll have the TV going. He'll be on his computer. He'll be on a phone call and then he'll be getting 
um, you know, like IMs on the, on his computer. Right. And, yep. ans- you know, holding the phone like this and answering like this. And I'm like, he'll come home and there'll be nothing happening in the house. I'll be sitting there, no TV, no radio, nothing. I'll be sitting there in silence doing what I'm doing. And he's like, it is too quiet in here. I can't handle this. <laughs> I've done yep. that. I've, um, I've done that where I've been on a conference call, answering instant messages and watching a television show all at the same time. The show's on mute with closed captioning. So I'm literally reading what's going on on the screen while instant messaging and on the phone. Yeah. I couldn't do that. I would say whatever I was seeing on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on the other side of the extreme, you have me who admits I've had people talk to me before and me go, huh? What? Like, I don't even know they're talking to me, you know, or I've had things ha- where I get involved in whatever it is I'm doing. Maybe I've got, you know, a, a very sort of laser focused one track mind, but, um, you know, well, I, I, my question to your husband and to you, Michael, would be, yes, you're doing multiple things at one time, hmm. but what about your concentration? Is it split? between those things in a way it, that it wouldn't be split if you were only doing two things or even just one thing, you know what I mean? Well, and it, it depends on what I'm doing. So um, I'm still fast switching. I'm not, I'm not actually doing multiple things simultaneously. The reality is, is if I'm typing something on the screen, I can't actually follow yeah. what's on the TV. Red titles, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but, um, but it, it depends on what I'm doing. So you talked about when you're writing, you get really focused and you, and you can't get same way. Oh, I don't I, even know what I'm writing, really. Yeah, I'm, I'm into it, and it's just—I'm just, just yeah. I'm in a, I'm in like this zone silo, and uh, my my wife actually knows when I go down here to my office to write, don't disturb me, right? Don't don't come down here. And I actually, um, I have all Apple devices, and there is a feature on Apple devices now called Focus Mode, where and you can have it turn on automatically when you open certain applications. So when I open Scrivener, which is the app that I use to write in. Um, focus mode turns on automatically. And now every device I own is basically off for notifications. I don't get phone calls, text messages, anything other than from my wife. She, she can get through to me because it might be an emergency. Um, but anyway, back to the point. And there are times like when I'm at work and I'm working on a problem, like, like I'm thinking of something and I'm, I'm, I'm walking through the hall and I'm thinking on this problem. And that's like, literally like a film strip in my head running of, trying to figure out what it is and I'm thinking of solutions and I'm trying to problem solve and come up with new ways to think about the problem. And I'll walk by and somebody go, well, say hi, why don't you? And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm in my own world right now trying to figure this out. And even though I seem like I'm present in this moment, I'm not, I'm thinking about this problem. So there are times when that does happen. It really depends on what I'm working on and how deep I am into it. But if I'm just surface doing stuff, which a lot of times for work, whenever I was sending us some messages and stuff that was surface stuff. You're just yeah. like, you know, yeah, sure. yeah. I got the document filled out. I'm going to send it to you in the morning, blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, that's a quick, easy answer that doesn't require a lot of thought or creativity. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's a val- really valid point is different tasks require different concentration levels and yeah. whether you're multitasking or not, it's, it's a, it's a range, right? It really depends on the level of concentration needed for each task. Um, yeah. I, however, can only do one thing at a time, regardless, <laughs> regardless. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, man, I believe that would be detail. I, I use it as a, I use it as a safety net. <laughs> this idea that guys can't multitask. I'm just like, you're right. Give me yeah. one task. I'll do it. <laughs> you know, cause I don't want to, I don't want to do, you know, multiple things. Forget that. I get, I, I will get passive tell you. aggressive and sarcastic. <laughs> I can't scratch my head cause I'm talking. I will tell you, you said something very early, CT, that I kind of giggled at about, can I drive and talk on the phone at the same time? And I'm just going to tell you the answer for everybody who's listening is no, you cannot drive and talk on the phone at the same time. Stay in your lane. Stop yeah. drifting into mine. <laughs> the I end. I, I'm ready to wrap that up because I want to clarify one thing. If you I, know when I said that, and we can rewind the tape. I hesitated before I said, it. because even in my head, I was like, 
do I really use driving and talking on the phone as an example of what I can do at the same time? Because I really kind of can't. I just, I don't like doing that. It's, you know, the phone yeah. rings and I'm driving. I usually just let it ring, but if I, I have to, can, I will, but. I can drive and talk at the same time. I cannot use my phone for anything else. Yeah. Like, oh, I, and yeah. I see so many people driving down the road and they're doing this with their phone which means they're like texting or they're surfing the web or checking social media or whatever. And I'm like, how the hell can you do that? Yeah. They I, don't, but they swerve yeah. all over the place. They do. And run yeah. into but, people. But I, yeah. I mean, like I, for me, uh, talking on the phone, I, I don't hold the phone up to my ear because then I don't have, you know, I used to drive a manual transmission and that's really hard to do if you have a phone up to your ear, but I would use uh, headsets or earbuds or whatever to be able to talk on the phone. But to me, that's no different than talking to somebody in the car with you. If sure, you've got yeah. a passenger with you and you're driving, you can do that. Right. Well, at least I can. <laughs> Maybe Lancey can't. Maybe she's like, shut up. I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because there was a time there. This actually happened. I was with a girlfriend of mine and we were driving down to meet another girlfriend at the club and uh we're just talking along and i missed the exit because we were talking and then i swear to god we came back around and did a, i missed it twice because we got to talk <laughs> now that's a problem there's but we were having a good time so it was all good <laughs> that happens to me if i'm packing up getting ready to leave for work and i'm talking to somebody especially on the phone i will forget something i'll be halfway to work i'm like god damn it I was supposed um, to bring my insert item here and I left it at home because I didn't. Yeah. Oh, I don't walk out the door ever. I don't think ever without having to turn right back around and get either my coffee or my wallet or my glasses or something that I forgot. And then I walk back out and my neighbors must think I'm crazy, man. <laughs> if they're watching me, because every time I walk out the door, shut it, lock it, unlock it, open it, go back in. Grab whatever it is I forgot every time. You are at least you are a Weasley. Before... I'm a what? You're a Weasley. Did you read Harry Potter? Oh gosh. I read, read, I read the first one, but not, I didn't read no. any. Well, in one of the later books, they're trying to get to uh King's Cross to get on the Hogwarts Express. And they left early enough to get there with plenty of time. And by the time they had gone back, because everybody had forgotten something and they had to keep going back and getting it over and over and over again, they were running really, really <laughs> late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's me. I'm a Weasley. There you go. go All ahead, right, man. guys. Well, I'm going to wrap it up. I think we've covered this topic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was All a right. really long last thought we had. <laughs> I know, right? It kind of, it kind of, it's okay. It's all good. All right. Well, that concludes this episode of Writing Guys. Uh, if you have a question that you would like answered about how men think, visit writingguys.net and click the button to ask us a question. Uh, there's a really short form that pops up. Just fill it out. You don't even have to leave your name. And uh, then be sure to like, follow, or subscribe to the Writing Guys podcast wherever it is that you listen to your podcasts. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye, y'all.